you know, every time I put together a video, I always uh, think about the subject and was like, is this good enough for a video? Does this make a video? And, you know, I make things all through the week, little things, big things, and uh, most of the time I don't make a video about it, but uh, sometimes I wish I did. And this is this week is no different. If you recall back a while ago when I was working on the uh, longhouse, you'll remember we peeled a bunch of bark and uh, we put the bark on the longhouse. And at the time it was decided that perhaps I should just take a few pieces home to make some crafts and uh, that's what I did. And you'll also remember in the, the last longhouse video I had made Sean a little, a little bare wall hanger to uh, put in his cabin made of the ash bark that we had peeled. Fast forward, uh, after I made that uh, craft for Sean I went on to do uh, all kinds of different things. A little bare fridge magnet, you know, and after making uh, Sean's bear, like if Sean's bear wasn't a video, then obviously this isn't a video. So then I went on to make a little gnome holding a lantern and uh, put that up by my front door of the house and, uh, you know, pretty cute, but uh, still not a video. I thought, I got it. I'll make a whole bunch of uh, Christmas tree decorations. Little uh, trees and snowmen to hang on the Christmas tree. And uh, a good idea. Still going to do more of them. But uh, still not good enough for a video. So after all that, what would make the perfect craft to use the bark with? I got it. Bigfoot. <laughs> Bigfoot. It's always a good video. All right, this just became fun because uh, old Bigfoot, this is gonna, that bark with the lines is gonna look like fur a little bit and uh, I think it's a winner. So let's qu let's talk quick about the, uh, the bark. I took that bark home green, or still wet off the tree, and I laid it all out on the floor, put some weights on it, and uh, tried to dry it split a little bit here this one here even even after drying it flat see how it goes go, went bonkers like that so when I have it half flat you can see I got a bunch of little little pieces in this little uh, little vice thing here and uh, even if you have old bark and it's like that you can throw it in the uh, the goldfish pond for a few days or uh, in a big pail of water and you know depending on how, how far gone it is but uh, I have softened the, the bark again and, and rehydrated it to a certain degree and uh, used it that way too but hopefully I've got some pieces in here that'll be big enough but this bark has a memory and no matter what you do even see how the edges they want to curl back the bark wants to be round because that's what how it was made so we can't just take our little uh our little sasquatch bigfoot here just can't cut them out of the bark and that's good enough because in time it's just going to curl so we always want a backing on it so we have to glue the bark to a piece of wood you can use plywood mdf whatever you have handy i'm going to use uh just a piece of pine now that's pretty thick, so I'm going to thin that down on the planer, but uh, I like pine. I don't really care for like na nice natural material on a, on a piece of plywood. So I'm going to thin this down, and then we're going to uh, glue it up. All right, I got my piece of uh, pine here. It's probably a, still a healthy 3 8 thick, so it's got some uh, backbone to, to hold the, uh, the bark. Got my piece of bark here too. Took a little little curled edge off the side but uh, now it's relatively flat it doesn't if there's a few dips and dives you'll see the clamps they'll actually they will clamps will bring it down nicely but you want to get as flat as you can but like I said a little hump here or there clamp will, will get it so let's make sure we got enough room for old Bigfoot <laughs> this is gonna be fun why didn't I think of this first so the pine is good and I just got enough room here on the bark, so we're ready to glue that bark to the wood. 
Yeah, maybe I'll sand that a little bit, rough it up so the glue will bite better. So I'll make sure we've got no uh, no loose spots. Nothing that's gonna peel off, but anyway, she's good. So let's put the glue to it. Oh yeah, lots of glue. All right, that's lots of glue. Take my piece of bark here. I use one uh, square edge. Keep the bottom nice and square. And we'll clamp it. I put a cover piece on the bark here, just to protect the bark. And I think I'm gonna put a piece on the bottom too, just so I don't get big indents in there. You know, that's what I was saying, like, very, very simple little craft, but who cares? It's fun. That's what it's all about. Making something fun. Doesn't all have to be fine furniture. Goofy and fun. We got her in there nice and flat now, and uh, we'll just let that set up. And uh, whenever you think it's the glue is dry and it's ready to cut, wait another hour. <laughs> Ask me how I know. All right, I've waited all I can wait. There's still some uh, some weight on the glue, but that's really heavy there, and I know that the uh, I know it's dry inside where it's thinner, so. Let's take it apart and see what we got. All right, looks nice and nice and tight all around. So we're ready. What we're gonna do? Is I'm gonna take my little Bigfoot here. I'm gonna mark it on the uh, the back side here, and uh, you have to think about this. Make sure that it's uh, orientated the way that you want. So if I cut it this way, it's actually as I see it here is how it's gonna be here. If that makes sense. So if you want them walking the other way, you'd have to flip around. But a couple things you can do. You can do like a, this is Elmer's mounting spray. I sometimes just spray spray the back of the wood and I stick it down. But uh, when you do that, your pattern's kind of stuck to the back of your, your project unless you sand it off. Or uh, it's just sticky and dirty. Another thing you can do is uh, carbon paper. And I think that's what we're going to do. So I'm going to lay down some carbon paper. I'm just going to trace the uh, big foot on the carbon paper. I'm going to put my big foot down. I could tape it on there just to make sure I don't screw it up, but we'll wing it. All I'm going to do is uh, outline Bigfoot. See what that did. There we go. See that? That's pretty handy, isn't it? To the saw.
foot. Where are you? <gasps> there he comes. Let's see, actually, that could be something all by itself. I don't know if you can see those shadows. It'd be like a subtle hidden Bigfoot right there. Well, let's just take him right out. I'm gonna put on my shirt. You can see. There he is. There's Bigfoot. I like it. I like it a lot. I like how the uh, the bark kind of gives that uh, fur look, right? I think just before we uh, before we finish him, I'm gonna put a little little keyhole slot in here just so I can hang him on the wall. Just like that. I put a screw on the wall and he hangs on the wall. Right? There. So there's not a, not a lot of sanding to be done on this guy. I think uh, little scroll saw blades do a real nice fine fine edge on there. So I think I'm just going to take some uh, some polyurethane here. Uh, it helps to uh, put some kind of a coating on there because I think it's just kind of like a like a glue. It makes it a little bit darker, but it also kind of glues any any pieces that uh, that just might pop off when you're uh, playing with it. <laughs> it just kind of glues it all together. This is supposed to be hand rubbed. I'm I'm living on the edge here. I'm I'm putting it on with a brush to get in the cracks. But why are you using hand rub? Well, because that's what I had, right? It doesn't matter. And that's that. Well, if nothing else, I hope this video showed that uh, it's okay to have fun with things. Do some Google searches for silhouettes and see what you can come up with, but uh, yeah, that was fun for me. So, hope you like it, and uh, until the next one, see you later guys.